This is the 2018 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon, better known simply as the Dodge Demon, and it is the most insane car on sale today. If for no other reason than this, the Dodge Challenger lineup now spans from a base model you can rent from Enterprise for like $49.95 a day, all the way to this, which has 840 horsepower. Yes, that's right, 840 horsepower, and the crazy doesn't stop there. This car was specifically built for drag racing, and I'll get into all the cool drag stuff in a minute, but for now, just listen to these numbers. The Bugatti Veyron runs the quarter mile in 10.1 seconds. The McLaren 720S does the quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds. The LaFerrari and the Porsche 918 Spyder do the quarter mile in 9.8 seconds. This thing? Well, do a quarter mile in 9.65 seconds. It's faster than a LaFerrari. And then we have the 0 to 60 times. The Demon's official 0 to 60 time is 2.3 seconds. But in the right mode, with the right settings, the little rollout, the Demon can do 0 to 60 in as low as 2.1 seconds, which makes it the quickest production car in history in history. The Porsche 918 Spyder has all-wheel drive and a dual-motor hybrid system with plug-in capabilities made into a technologically advanced V8 put inside a flowing sculpted body for aerodynamics, and this giant hulk of Dodge is quicker. The Demon weighs 650 pounds more than a 918 Spyder it's still quicker. The Demon costs a million dollars less than a 918 Spyder, it's still quicker. Anyway, I could go on for a while talking about this stuff, but it's better just to show it to you. So today, I'm going to show you around the Demon, and I'm going to show you all of its interesting quirks and features, and then I'm going to interview the car's owner to find out what would possess someone to buy the Demon. Then I'm going to take it out on the road, which I'm already a little bit nervous about, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Demon, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also compiled a list of the weirdest Dodge models currently listed for sale on Autotrader. You may also want to check out the link below to kellybluebook.com as this car is going into the Kelly Blue Book long-term test fleet and the car's costs and ownership experiences will be documented for the first year of its life. I'm going to start up front with the Demon's hood scoop, and indeed, this isn't just any hood scoop. Instead, this is the single largest hood scoop in any production car. Now, when you open up the hood, you can see that Dodge calls it the air grabber, which is sort of a retro term. It was an air intake system they used to use during the muscle car era. And indeed, it is an air grabber. This thing, during a quarter mile run, Dodge says it ingests enough air to fill the lungs of 800 humans. And since we're under the hood, time to cover a few quirks of the engine, starting with the fact that at a maximum of 840 horsepower, this car has the most power of any production V8 ever in history. There are a lot of other cool things under here too. For example, how about the fact that this little Demon logo is cast onto the engine itself? There's no plastic covering this thing. Instead, there's this cool Demon logo, which is just awesome. And then there's the SRT Power Chiller, which is kind of a stupid name, but it's for a really cool thing. If you've ever been to the drag strip, you'll know that your car starts to get hot after you make drag strip run after drag strip run. So a lot of guys, they come and they put ice packs on their engine, their intake to cool it down. Well, the SRT Power Chiller uses the air conditioning refrigerant to cool the engine. It's basically a built-in ice pack for your engine when you're in drag mode. The Demon is also the first production car designed to run on race gas. Yes, that's right. You can fill this thing up with 100 octane fuel, and that is its optimal setting. In fact, I said before the car has a maximum of 840 horsepower. Well, if you run it on a regular 91, 93 octane premium swill, the kind of crap your car runs on, it only puts out 808 horsepower. Not until you stick in race gas can it possibly do the 840, but it's not that simple. You can't just put in race gas. Instead, you have to put in the race gas, then have your ECU reform. 
flashed to run at the full 840 horsepower. And when you do that, something interesting happens on the inside. Specifically, every Demon comes with two sets of center interior buttons, the normal buttons and the ones you can use if you want to run race gas. When you reflash your computer to run at max power, you also install the second set of buttons, which includes a button to switch to race gas mode for when you want to do crazy drag strip runs and unlock the Demon's full performance potential. In Stiller on front, this car also has another trick up here. This vehicle has four headlights, right? And not quite. The two inner ones are actually dummies. They're fake. They look like headlights, but really they're air intakes designed to suck even more air into the engine of this thing. Now the little circle that rims them is actually an LED light that lights up, but stick your hand in there. The actual hole is a hole. It's an air intake. Now the less powerful plebeian Challenger Hellcat with only 707 horsepower, it has one dummy air intake in the headlights, but this car, I guess it was deemed it simply needed more air, so instead it has two. Another cool thing about those air intakes, look inside them and you'll notice there is a little demon logo in there. No one will ever see that, no one will ever notice it, but they put it in there for the few that do, and that is pretty cool. Also interesting in the front of this car is the front lip spoiler, which is absolutely gigantic. Take a look at this thing, it's huge. You could store stuff on this thing. It's massive and it's unique to the Demon, so it's one way that you can tell this car apart on the outside from the regular Challenger models. Next up, we gotta talk tires. Now this car is intended for drag racing and so it comes with drag slicks that are just barely street legal. They're basically drag slick tires, except they have little grooves in them for the most minimal amount of rain. These tires are specifically designed for this car and so if you look on them they actually have the Demon logo printed on the outside of the tire which is super cool. Also on the tires is the tread wear rating which shows how long they'll last. The industry standard is 100 and many new cars are 200 or 250. This thing is zero. You will never again see a tread wear rating of zero. A couple of other interesting things about the Demon's tires, because these are basically street legal drag slicks, when you buy the Demon, you have to sign a waiver acknowledging that you know you're not really supposed to use the tires or the car in wet weather. You're not supposed to use it when it's below 15 degrees out, and they don't recommend that you use it on the highway because these tires are so grippy that highway use will start to wear them faster than a traditional tire. And since we're talking about drag stuff we might as well talk about one of the coolest things and that is the fact that when you have it in drag mode or an 840 horsepower mode with everything set right and you floor it at the drag strip this car will actually lift off the ground the front end will come up a couple of inches and for a few feet going down the drag strip the front end will lift off the ground all that weight is transferred to the back so the car can push off the line faster in fact this car is so fast or that 9.65 second quarter mile time that it is technically illegal for any NHRA drag racing, if you're running under 10 seconds, you're supposed to have a roll cage. And so this car built for crazy drag racing is too fast to really go drag racing unless you mount a roll cage in it. Instead, what you'll have to do if you want to take this drag racing is just sort of let off at the very end to ensure that you get like a 10.1 or a 10.2 and you don't break the NHRA rules. Also cool are the Demon's flared fenders. Look at these things. In order to accommodate the drag racing tires, they flared out the fenders like two inches and it gives the demon a mean menacing look you can't get on any other challenger except the Hellcat wide body. Another cool quirk on the outside of the demon that would be the windshield. Now the windshield itself is fairly normal but take a look at the bottom corner of the windshield over on the driver's side you will see a little demon doing a burnout like if it was in the burnout box at a drag strip. It even has the fender flares so you can be sure it's a demon and not some lesser challenger. Now that's a cool looking thing but it's also functional. Chrysler has been putting these little windshield graphics in the windshields of a lot of its models, especially the Jeep Wrangler and other Jeeps, and I've been told that owners are far more likely to replace their windshields with a factory windshield and go through the automaker's parts department instead of going to an aftermarket cheaper windshield just because it has this graphic. So putting that graphic in actually makes Chrysler a little extra money if your windshield breaks. Another cool exterior feature of this car is the black treatment over the hood, the roof, and the trunk. Now that's an option. You can get 
get the car in one color, or you can just get the black treatment on the hood, or you can get it in all three places. I like the fact that it's in all three places though, because no other Challenger model offers that except for the TA, and the TA has a different hood. So if you have it in all three places and you see the hood, you can easily distinguish this car as a demon, which is important because interesting fact, this car doesn't say demon anywhere on it, not even the back, it just says SRT. Of course, you'd kind of have to be an idiot to look at this car and not realize you were seeing a demon because there are a lot of ways to distinguish it from every other Challenger. There is, of course, the demonic badges on the front fenders. There are the giant fender flares. There's the black treatment over the top of the car if the owner got it. There are the drag slicks. There's the hood scoop. But if you're still a little confused, well, maybe you can hear it rev. Let's take a listen. When you climb inside the Demon, one of the first things you'll see and get excited about are the gauges, which are super cool. They're these old school retro muscle car gauges, and they just look awesome. They're not unique to the Demon. They're in some other Challenger models, but I just love how they look. A couple of other interesting quirks inside the Demon, the passenger side climate control vent says demon on it and not only that it shows which number demon you have which is kind of a cool little touch additionally the srt logo in the middle of the steering wheel lights up at night which is something i've never really seen in any other car before but it makes it feel kind of cool and special i'm also happy to report that the demon's interior has really been dressed up from the standard challenger the seats are really nice they're these nice heavily bolstered sport seats but they also feel like they have nice soft leather the materials are just nicer the stitching is better, the door panels look nicer, but then again, all that had better be true considering this car's price point. Then again, with that said, you don't get a lot of stuff in this car. There's no adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, forward collision warning. All those modern safety features are taken out. In fact, you don't even get a power passenger seat. It's all controlled manually, which is crazy in a car this expensive. And it gets even crazier than that. You could order it with just a manual driver's seat and no passenger seat. The theory is if you're a crazy drag strip person and you just want to save weight, you just order the driver's seat and who cares about the passenger? It's not like you're going to be running with one anyway and that'll improve your drag time by just that many milliseconds. Now, if you do choose to get this car without a passenger seat, that little waiver I was telling you about earlier with the tires, that comes back into play. You also must sign on that waiver that if you get this car without a passenger seat, you will never try to install a passenger seat and you will never put anyone in the passenger seat because they will not be adequately protected in a crash. Basically, if you get this car with no passenger seat, it's going to have no passenger seat forever. It won't even come with a seat belt, and you're sort of making that commitment. Needless to say, virtually no one who's ordering these things is actually getting it without a passenger seat. But then again, those waivers you sign say a lot of things. One of them is that you promise never to use the racetrack or drag strip features on the road, haha. -ha. So what exactly are those racetrack and drag strip features? Well, let's take a look in the infotainment system. There's some crazy stuff in here. Now, I'm gonna start in the infotainment system with the SRT app. Now, I covered a lot of the SRT features in my Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk review, which I'll link in the description below. In this one, I'm just gonna focus on most of the stuff that's unique to the Demon, starting with drag mode. Take a look at this. You click on drag mode, and it goes through this whole checklist of things that it does in order to get this car ready ready for a drag race, which is just so cool. And the craziest part is, if you have the air conditioning all the way up and you put it in drag mode, you can feel that the air conditioning has been optimized for drag use. In other words, it's been greatly diminished inside the cabin and the AC refrigerant is being used to cool the engine. Another cool feature in the SRT app, unique to the Demon, that would be race cool down mode. Now you're in drag mode, you're doing drag runs and your engine starts to get hot. It will circulate that AC refrigerant to cool down the engine but that's not all. Put it in race cool down mode, leave it running, and it will do a much better job cooling down your engine than it would if you just turned off the car. Now, of course, a lot of cars will cool down their engines if you leave them idling after a racetrack run or a drag strip run, but I've never before seen a car with a specific mode designed to cool down the engine even faster than a normal car after you use it on the track. And this might be a good time to talk about the keys. Now, when you buy this car, it's delivered with three keys. Two are red and one is black. Now the two red keys give you access to the full complement of horsepower, 808 or 840 if you do that ECU flash. The black key 
Well, that restrains the car to a mere 500 horsepower. What a crazy vehicle this must be for the restrained version to have only 500 horsepower. Next, we move on to the launch control. Now, it's not all that unusual that this car has launch control, but the unusual thing is that this car has launch control disabled until you reach the first 500 miles. After you cross the 500 mile threshold, then you can use it. There's some electronic function that tells the car that you've hit 500 and then you can start to use launch control. Maybe even crazier than that, launch control has a variable RPM. So you can launch this car from all the way up to 3000 RPM if you want, or you can dial it down to a lower RPM depending on what you think the optimal launch is. Also cool with that launch control, the little icon that shows what RPM you're setting is actually the little red slashes in the Dodge logo. That is a clever little detail. Another cool feature is a factory line lock system, which lets you engage the front brakes without the rear brakes. Drag racers like to use this for burnouts and better starts. Like I said, you can see most of the rest of the SRT and performance pages items in my Jeep Trackhawk review, which is linked in the description below. With that said, going through these features, I found a little surprise in the bests section, which shows you your best zero to 60 time, quarter mile time, whatever, since you bought the car or since you last reset it. The owner of this car has not yet been to the drag strip, although he's done some spirited runs up highway on ramps. And this car shows a best quarter mile time of 12 7. Now, that wasn't intentional. He just kind of did an acceleration run up a highway on ramp and then let off the accelerator pedal and joined traffic. And yet he still ran a 12.7. You can see the trap speed is 75. That was probably the traffic speed that he was going by the end of the quarter mile. In fact, he didn't even know that he had set a best time until I was sitting in the car with him going through all of the different features and functions. And we saw his best quarter mile time in there. And he was rather surprised to see that. It's kind of hilarious. Now, beyond the infotainment screen, there is a screen in the middle of the gauge cluster that also has a couple of cool features in it. For example, if you go to the tire pressure section, you get to see all the tire pressures individually and the car displayed is a challenger which is a kind of neat little trick additionally if you go down to the gauges that show you all sorts of performance stuff they're these old time gauges which i find kind of funny here we are scrolling through old time looking gauges except they're on an electronic lcd screen in the middle of actual gauges it's kind of funny those gauges show way more stuff than virtually every other car for instance you can look at your intercooler coolant temperature which is something that well, almost nobody really cares about. I also like that in this center screen, among the performance tab and the tire pressure tab, one of the tabs is fuel economy. That will be the least looked at tab in the entire history of automotive screen design. Another interesting feature controlled through the infotainment system, that would be the mirror dimmer. Remember when we all had little levers on our mirrors, you push it and then it's on the dimmer mode? Well, not anymore. Now you press dimmer in the infotainment system and it turns on and off the automatic dimming interior rear view mirror. Another thing I like about the radio, you see that little favorite button in the upper right? Well, you push that when one of your favorite songs is playing on the radio and that lets the radio know that it is indeed one of your favorite songs. Then you're driving along one day listening to the music and then that favorite song is on a different radio station. It pops up a little graphic letting you know that a song you previously selected as one of your favorites is playing on a different radio station so that you can switch to that station and listen to one of your favorite songs. And that is a pretty cool idea. Another thing I like about the Demon, it doesn't have just a crappy plastic steering wheel like a lot of cars and doesn't even have a leather wrap steering wheel. This one is wrapped in Alcantara and stitched and it looks really Really good. Now, most Alcantara wheels aren't heated, but this one is. You can heat this wheel. Press the little heat button, and then eventually it comes on and it warms your hands. But with all the interesting quirks and the cool features and all the cool modifications and the horsepower, we also have to talk about one other important Demon trait, and that would be pricing. The Demon starts at $86,000 with shipping. And compare that to a base Challenger. Base Challenger starts at $28,000, meaning this thing is more than three times more expensive than a base Challenger. It's got to be the biggest spread in the entire car industry. It's also a huge horsepower spread. The base Challenger is at 305 and this thing is at 840. Now the sticker price of this particular Demon is just over $92,000. It has virtually every option except for the expensive sunroof. But with dealer markups and collectability, it's unlikely that any of these things are really going to trade hands for less than $100,000. And in terms of pricing, that's also another interesting quirk and feature because, well, I haven't discussed the accessories yet. I'm going to start with the Demon Crate. 
That's right, the demon crate, which is a crate that comes with your demon. It's pictured here, and it's loaded with stuff. There's a demon-branded hydraulic floor jack, a demon-branded impact wrench, a demon-branded tire pressure gauge, a tool bag, and fender mat, and the whole thing is massive, and it comes on a pallet that's shipped to you after you take delivery of your demon. Hopefully, you have room in your garage. And so now that you've seen the quirks and features, we move on to maybe the craziest quirk, and that would be the owner. What kind of person buys a demon? I'm going to find out. This is Carl Brower. Carl is, uh, he works with me, supervises my colleagues at Auto Trader and Kelly Blue Book. And uh, this is his demon. And Carl, I got to ask, are you insane? I am insane. I think that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I knew when I saw this car at the New York Auto Show that it was going to be this very special, unique car and kind of a moment in time. And that's how I define cars like this, whether it's a Ford GT or a Dodge Demon. It's like, okay, is this a moment in time that people are gonna never forget? Uh, and I think it is. So you thought this was, you knew it instantly, this was kind of a special, yeah. even with the Hellcat, you were like, this is, this is the this one. This is the one. And I had, I've owned two Dodge Challengers, original Dodge Challenger era cars in my lifetime. And I'm a, I grew up a Mopar guy. And I've been fighting the Dodge Challenger pool since 2008. So we're now at 10 years. And then I went to the press event in July and I drove it. What I realized is that this 800 horsepower monster isn't really much of a monster at all. It was very easy to drive. The car is just like Hellcat wide bodies are. Anyone who's driven one knows that the real magic of those cars is how nice they are to drive when you aren't flooring them. Do you plan on drag racing? I do. Drag racing was my first love of automobiles. What got me into being a car guy was having a 69 Plymouth GTX with a 440 before I ever had my driver's license. And I spent a lot of time uh, in very legal ways at all times, of course, <laughs> drag racing that car and enjoying the thrill of drag racing. This car is basically 15 year old Carl's dream come true. Do people notice it? Do they know that it's, I mean, obviously it's crazy looking, but a lot of crazy looking challengers out there. Do they know that it's a D, I mean, you've only had two weeks, but in this time, have yeah, they known? I've had multiple people. I mean, on the day we were breaking in, we parked it in an out burger and we're inside eating and we're watching multiple people taking photos of it or taking photos in front of it. Right. And you know, we, I take it to a car wash here and the guy who owns the car wash is out there. This is the first one I've seen, right. oh my gosh, you know? So you have to kind of know. I think the average person might just think it's another kind of crazy looking challenger and you've got plenty of those running around right. Southern California, you know that. You right. know, you've got Sublime, TAs and right, SRTs. Right, right. So I think a lot of people just assume it's another crazy challenger, but anyone in the know, whether it's Knows. the hood or the drag radials, yeah. they know what it is. Do you, do you look down on those challenger people now? Are you like, yeah, I got the, oh, I got I, the boss challenger. I am so much cooler than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, love, I almost bought a TA in August. I had a TA test car and I fell in love with that thing. When this one hit, I still wasn't going to buy it because I have another bill coming soon in terms of car payments to go. Yeah, so, that's, so that is something. I mean, so Carl's getting in the new Ford GT, which is one of the more insane cars, sort of like the opposite ends of the American car spectrum. Right, which by the way, again, I love. I love the idea that I already have 1500 horsepower in my garage between right. the 5 GT and this car now. Right, so right. It's over 1500 and I love the disparity in that one of them is a performance handling race car right. for racetracks and the other one is a straight line drag car. Right, right, right. Do you think this is, so the Hellcat, we all thought when the Hellcat came out that it was the most insane thing. Then this comes out, do you think this is, it's over? Or do you think there's a 950 horsepower one going, the next gen Challenger is going to have a thousand horsepower one? You know, manufacturers have this habit of outdoing each other. We'll see what the American car companies do, what their next kind of, you know, uh, lob into this performance world is and who wants to up the ante next. I think both of us realize that cars are not getting more uh, you know, gas hungry, they're getting less gas hungry. You're supposed to follow all these rules now about how, how much horsepower you're burning and how much gas you're burning. And it's just hard to believe that they can keep going in that direction. Yeah. All right, you ready to drive it? I am absolutely ready to drive it. You scared? I'm scared. All right, time to drive the Demon. I have two goals here today. I want to drive the Demon and explore its performance. I also want to not die. If you can handle a six-cylinder SXT <laughs> and you aren't an idiot, you can handle <laughs> Dodge Demon. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I had an incident with a Hellcat. Yeah, I heard. All right. So the first thing that I noticed, you can hear the supercharger whine, which sounds great. Even just at low speeds, you can hear it. Uh, but also just the rumbling of it is just crazy. All right, here we go. I just did, like rolling onto it. That, I, I didn't even come close to putting it on the floor. All right, let's try that again. I got some room here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it really down now. There's no around. Oh my God. Oh my God. You just change, you change your circumstances so quickly. Oh, wow, that is crazy, crazy, craziness. But yeah, I mean, drive it here, if I'm not 
do anything stupid. It just kind of feels like a car. You are constantly sort of reminded in little ways that you're not in just a typical car. The supercharger whine and the engine note are the biggest ones. Uh, it's actually quite impressive how much you can hear them even just at a quarter throttle that whine comes in in the engine note. But also you're looking out over this giant tall, you know, hood scoop. I mean, it's very clear that this isn't just some run of the mill everyday challenge. Nonetheless, I mean, I'm sitting here, I can ventilate my seat if I want to. I mean, I got a Wi-Fi hotspot in this car. I'm driving an 840 horsepower Wi-Fi hotspot. Boy, this is actually kind of an interesting discrepancy here. We're yeah. next to a Toyota Mirai. <laughs> His only emission is water. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got the most polluting and the least polluting cars within about 20 feet of each other. It, it's almost unbelievable how quickly I can break the speed limit and more importantly, how easily. Uh, the speed limit's 50 here. I'm going 52 now just with, I mean, a tap. I mean, I couldn't have gone more than a quarter throttle there, and it was, what, four seconds? We're already over the... Now, driving on the road, yeah, I mean, it feels like a fairly fairly normal car. And actually, it feels like a, a pretty luxurious one. Um, I'm surprised. The seats are nice and comfortable. They're not too grippy like a real, like a sports, like a go-around corners Porsche, you know, grippy sports seats, because they know that's not really the intent. Um, I, I put 480 miles on it uh, a week and a half ago never even gave a comfort of thought. It's almost unbelievable that we can be talking about a car that does 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds where comfort is like, yeah, not of course. Com not compromised. The <laughs> only difference between the Rental Challenger and this one from where I'm sitting is the hood scoop and this wheel. Everything else would be identical and until, the sound. And until, yeah. I mean, that's, that's three quarters throttle. I'm not even flooring it there. And it's like, the fast, this thing is so much faster than my station wagon. Yeah, and it doesn't feel wobbly, and it feels uh, that there's body roll is actually surprisingly limited considering how big it is and how heavy it is. Right. And it feels, it feels flat, and it feels good, and the feedback is so good from the steering. That's another really important thing in my opinion. <laughs> it's the sound, it's the whole experience, and part of it is the size of the car. Right. Part of it is like, oh my god, I'm moving something this fast. I still feel like the track hawk almost felt more insane because I was sitting up high and it just feels like a physically huge car to it move feels, at that pace. It feels wrong. It feels it. totally, whereas this, I mean, I've driven a Hellcat, so this is like the next step up. Track hawk is like a new dimension. And so that's the 2018 Dodge Demon. 86 grand for a Challenger with options and the inevitable dealer markup, almost certainly over $100,000 for a Challenger. But then again, this isn't just any Challenger. This is a Challenger that's quicker zero to 60 than a Bugatti Veyron. It has a better quarter mile time than a Porsche 918 Spyder. It has more V8 power than a McLaren P1. This thing basically defies the laws of physics, overcoming them with just endless horsepower. And in a world where cars are increasingly electrified and self-driving, this may just be the craziest muscle car that will ever exist. And with that, time for the Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Challenger is cool and the Demon is especially cool, though the design is starting to get a little old and it gets a 7 out of 10. Next up is acceleration. Obviously, this thing gets a 10 out of 10. Handling is surprisingly good and the car is unusually composed for a drag racer. Still, it's no sports car and it gets a 5 out of 10. Cool factor is obviously high, especially right now, and this thing gets a 9 out of 10. With that said, I'm going to dock importance just a bit. I would have said the Hellcat was the greatest muscle car ever, and then this thing came out, and I don't really know where it's going to end. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 38 out of 50, which places the Demon in some good company. Next up are the daily categories, starting with features. The Demon has a lot of cool stuff, but it's also missing some modern tech, and I can only give it a 6 out of 10. Next up is comfort, and the Demon is shockingly comfortable almost insanely so for a car with these numbers, and I have to give it a 7 out of 10. Then there's quality. The interior is an improvement over the standard Challenger, but it still isn't exactly a luxury car, and I can't give it above a 6 out of 10. Practicality is good. The huge trunk would normally qualify it for a 5, but I simply have to drop the score a point for its atrocious fuel economy, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Finally, there's value, and I struggled with this one, but a $100,000 Challenger is just really expensive. I may end up being wrong if these things hold their value well, but right now I'm giving it a 6 out of 10, bringing the total daily score to 29 out of 50. Add it up, and the total Doug score is 67 out of 100, which places the Demon higher than any Dodge Challenger as any business being. It's an impressive car, and not just on paper.